So, Student Action on Canadian Water Attitudes Competition, and it's the 2024 to 2025 school year. So, in this um, webinar, we're going to talk about us and what we do, about you and who you are, about the competition, the steps, how to progress in the competition, how the project will be judged, the prizes that are available, who we acknowledge for sponsoring the prizes, the next steps, and my contact information in case you want to get a hold of me at any point. Okay, so this is about Safe Drinking Water Foundation. We've been a registered Canadian charity since 1998, and our mission is to educate the leaders of today and tomorrow about drinking water quality issues to realize our goal of safe drinking water being available to every Canadian. Now, there might be some students, especially I'm guessing some grade four students who are wondering, what do you mean available to every Canadian? We live in a developed country. Don't all Canadians have safe drinking water? Unfortunately not. There are many First Nations and rural communities where they don't have safe drinking water. There are people in a First Nations community in Ontario that has been under a boil water advisory for almost 30 years. So they could be, I'm guessing, probably somewhat around your teacher's age and never have been able to get a glass of water from the tap. That's just like mind blowing, isn't it? So we send water testing kits to schools and have other water education programs. And I am Nicole Hancock and I'm the executive director. So you don't need to put this in the chat because we all get to talk about this. So um, the school in BC, not Ontario, BC, sorry, too many classes and too many students I teach and just a lot of names in a lot of places. Um, but the school in BC, so they're in BC, they're in grade four. And the school at Balfour Collegiate is um, a high school class. What class is it that you're doing this in? Like, is it chemistry 30 or what is this class? It's uh, environmental science 20, so it's a grade 11 class. Okay, well, that's very fitting with environmental science. That's cool. And I've taught environmental science 20. Okay, so the competition. So students will investigate, educate, and report on a water issue in their community. This competition is for students in kindergarten to grade 12. So you might be competing against kindergarten students, grade 12 students. The project must take place in Canada. I know you're Canadian schools, um, but just everybody who you survey, et cetera, needs to be in Canada. So uh, if you've got an uncle in the United States, you don't need to bother him with a survey. It must take place in Canada. One national grand prize valued at $3,000 for the top school in Canada. So this will consist of a water bottle filling station, a commemorative plaque, and maybe some reusable water bottles and our water testing kits, depending on how much it costs. We've had some very drastically different results with schools winning, and then how much it would cost for them to have a water bottle filling station installed. So it really depends, it seems, on the school division, um, which I wasn't expecting, to be honest. But in Saskatoon, they were able to install three water bottle filling stations in one school by raising a little bit more money because three stations were able to be installed for, I think, around close to $4,000. But there was a school in Ontario where I guess they were going to charge them a lot of money um, to have the water bottle filling station installed. So they couldn't even get one. So they actually used their price money to get more water testing kits and to send water testing kits um, to other schools to sponsor them for other schools. So when we reach that point, if you're the winner, we can definitely talk to you and work something out as long as it's like in the water theme. So um, different like water bottles, commemorative plaques, um, water bottle filling station, things like that. So our thoughts about how the prizes will work is that there's a top school in Saskatchewan that will win a prize. And the school in Regina, you're actually the only school in Saskatchewan that's registered so far. So basically, you do a project, you'll probably get a prize at this point, at least. So that's valued at $2,200. 
And my thought is that it would be the water bottle filling station and the commemorative plaque. Hopefully it would be enough for that. It depends on your school division, et cetera. Um, if the top school in Canada is located in Saskatchewan, then the second place school in Saskatchewan will win the prize package valued at $2,200. Now, there's only one school in Saskatchewan at this point, so not an issue at this point, but you would win the grand prize if you were the first place overall. Um, steps to participate in the competition. So you have completed the registration form. I've seen one from each of your teachers. You're currently attending this webinar, so you don't need to worry about emailing me to let me know that you attended. I will be marking you off as attended. And then you will brainstorm ideas for the preliminary survey with your students. Create your preliminary survey and have your community complete it. We strongly recommend that you complete this by the end of November because I know I've been a teacher in schools. I know December is crazy and short. So we recommend that you have that done by the end of November. It's not a necessity, but it's a strong recommendation just because we know December. So watch for an email message from me in January 2025 and follow the instructions and you'll schedule a time and I'll meet with you and your students. Well, it's great. Right now I'm meeting with you and your students. Um, this one could have been just the teacher or the teacher and the students, so that works. Um, but in that meeting, it will be you, the teacher and the students for sure. And we'll discuss your plan to educate the members of your community based on what you found out from completing the survey. So you will need to have delivered the survey to your people, um, to your community by that meeting. So your class must meet with us by the end of February to continue to be eligible to compete. So your teachers might want to write down that date and watch for that email um, and make sure that you meet with us by the end of February. Take action to educate and involve people in the community about the water issues. So we recommend starting this immediately after you meet with me and that you continue throughout March and April, so in the spring. You're going to then conduct follow-up surveys, and we recommend completing this by May 9th so that your teacher has a week in which to submit their report, send me the pictures, send me the video, things like that. Any questions about any of this? Just a quick question for me. Because we're a high school class and our term ends by the end of January, is it okay to have everything submitted and done prior to that? Yeah, we can work with that. So that's quite a short time frame, but um, I think that in that case, you would want to have your survey done probably by the end of October. And yeah. then we'll connect about when we should meet, but we should probably meet at the beginning of November. And then you can educate people. I guess you can educate your relatives and stuff over the holidays. And then you could um, do your follow-up survey you know, the last, like, mid-January or something. And then, yeah, your teacher could submit it at any point, really. Uh, by May. Oh, sorry. Any other questions? Okay. Oh, someone does? Um, what are the prizes? Oh. They already mentioned that. Oh. So the top prize is $3,000 towards a water bottle filling station, a commemorative plaque, and maybe some reusable water bottles and our water testing kits. And then the top school in Saskatchewan, less of the top school overall, then they'll get the national grand prize. Top school in Saskatchewan will get um, a prize package worth $2,200, which will just be the water bottle filling station and commemor commemorative plaque. And as I've said, I've had some strangely different um, situations in different schools. So we'll work with you if it doesn't work out to get one water bottle filling station or if it works out to get two water bottle filling stations. Um, we'll talk to your teacher, to your admin, and we'll get that figured out. Okay, any other questions? Okay. So then next up, um, which way is down, which way is up? Oh, there we go. Preliminary survey. So ask a variety of questions so you can determine which actions to target to reduce water consumption. 
So what you don't want to have happen is to decide ahead of time, for example, that you're going to target people turning the tap off when they brush their teeth, do the survey and find out, oh, everybody's already turned the tap off when they brush their teeth. Well, now what are you going to target? So you might want to ask several different questions, like how long are your showers? Um, do you turn the top off when you brush your teeth? Um, do you only run the dishwasher when you have a full load? Do you only wa run the washing machine when you have full load? Um, do you have a low flow toilet? Or if you don't, then do you put a two liter bottle in your, in your toilet tank to reduce the flow? Um, things like that. So you might want to ask a variety of different questions. So ask questions that are specific and that are easy to answer in a few words. So for example, do you leave your tap on, the tap on when brushing your teeth? So then you might have answer choices like yes, sometimes, no. Um, it's up to you how exactly you do it. Like always, often, sometimes, never, whatever. But you're going to have um, specific questions. Like don't just ask, you know, like, how do you think you waste water? And then have them respond. Have them like ask them different questions. Like, do you always turn the tap off when you brush your teeth? How many minutes is your average shower? Um, do you only run your dishwasher when you have a full load? Do you only run your washing machine when you have a full load, et cetera? So you can also have other surveys if you want to conduct further research. So you must have the preliminary survey, you must have the follow up survey. But if you want to survey people and see how they're doing in terms of their behavior change along the way, and you want to have a survey monthly or whatever, that's up to you. So these questions will help you learn what attitudes your community has about the issue. So please only survey people you know and with whom you're comfortable. So for safety reasons, we don't want people going door to door or anything like that. So some ideas is like your friends and family, like the class in vagina. Since they plan to finish by January, um, their family, their relatives could be a great community for them because they will hopefully see them over the holidays. Um, you could go to the other classes in your school. You could do this at a school assembly. If you live, in, like if you go to a school where there's a school like a block away or something, your teacher might be able to talk to a teacher or the principal at that school, and you might be able to go to their assembly or to go to one of their classrooms. Um, so you can ask your friends and family to ask their friends and family as well, but make sure that the every person you ask, every person who's in your like population for your data has to take the preliminary survey, be educated and take the follow-up survey. Otherwise, it doesn't count, and you need to throw out their data from their preliminary survey if you don't end up educating them and having them do the follow-up survey. You can survey other classrooms, or you can give the survey to all the students at an assembly. You could also survey students at other schools that are near yours. So different ways to distribute their survey. Now, I know the high school class is probably very advanced in tech, so you probably know how to make like Google Forms. So you could use a Google Form. You could email a survey. You could email the link to the Google Form. You could have a paper copy. Um, that's an easy way to survey people at an assembly or at, in another classroom. Um, you could talk to them face to face. So if you're doing it like over the holidays and you got your uncle around, you can ask him your questions and write down his answers. So that will be your baseline data. So can you get a few specific answers to show a difference in attitude? So can you tally all of the people who have a certain attitude or action on the issue? So what to do with the answers you get from your survey? So make sure that your first survey gathers all the information that you need, because you can't go back and do a first survey. A first survey is a first survey. You can't do a preliminary survey after you've educated people. Every project must ask the question, what is the source of your tap water? Because one of our funders for this is RBC, Royal Bank of Canada, and they did a survey of Canadians and found that only about half of all Canadians know where their drinking water, their tap water comes from. And that was one of the motivators that we had for doing this competition. And one of the reasons that we got funding from them 
was that only about half of all adult Canadians know where the tap water comes from. So the class in Regina, do you know where your tap water comes from? Does anybody there know where their tap water comes from? We all do because we just studied that. Okay, so, so we it's what's in the lake, right? Buffalo Pound. Yeah. Oh, Buffalo Pound, yeah. Okay, and the school in, sorry, Mind Block Langley, right? Do you know where your water comes from? Yes, we do. <laughs> Rivers. Rivers? <laughs> Do you know the name of the river? Something to research if you don't know. Okay. So you're going to record the number of people who answered correctly and the total number of people who you surveyed. So the percentage of people who answered correctly can be found, the high school class hopefully already knows this, by dividing the number of people who answered correctly by the total number of people who completed the survey and then multiplying by 100%. So for example, if 31 people answered correctly and you surveyed 115 people, then it'd be 27%. And you need them to name the specific source. So for example, we're in Saskatoon, we get our tap water from the South Saskatchewan River. If someone just wrote down the river, no, like tell them to like in the survey, say to name the source and don't say name the river because then you're giving them a clue. Just say, like, be specific with naming the source. So educate your community about the location of their source water, the amount of water that is drawn from the source, what might pollute it, how to keep it clean, et cetera. Don't just name it. So, for example, here in Saskatoon, I've thought for a while now, what we should do is we should get a filmmaker, like some kind of video maker, and go down to the beaches that are near the South Saskatchewan River where people hang out and litter, and ask them if they know the source of their tap water and see how many of them don't know that they're like literally littering a foot from the source of their tap water. So you must ask this question again in your follow-up survey and see how the percentage of people who know the source of their tap water changed. For example, the first survey showed 30.2% of people surveyed knew the source of their tap water. After we tallied the results of the follow-up survey, we calculated that 95.7% other people knew the source of the tap water. Prepare people to answer your questions. So if you're going to ask them a question like how many minutes on average is your shower, people might not know that accurately out of the blue. So you might have to have like a school announcement or something saying like students time to showers for the next week um, and then they'll know. So you might, but don't tell them why you need to know, because then they might be like, oh, I'll take shorter showers so that, like, you know, my results look good or whatever. Um, calculate the average to get a representation of the school. Use this as your baseline data. If you need any help calculating, like, averages or doing any kind of statistical analysis, I'm actually a high school math teacher, so let me know. I can help you. So important data to keep track of for the report is on our web page. So your teacher can go there and make sure that she um, is tracking all of this. So it's the number of youth who were directly involved in the implementation of the project, the number of volunteers who are involved in the project, and the number of volunteer hours that they invested into your project, the number of formal or informal partnerships. So for example, if one of your students has a dad who works at a company and that company gets involved and helps out or like has you educate the people and do the surveys or whatever, then that would be an informal partnership. Formal partnership would be more so if you had like a good an agreement with like your local university or maybe with your local watershed group or something like that. Uh, the number of community educational events held. So for example, the number of times students spoke in an assembly about water issues, and the number of events that they spoke at, et cetera. So more important data to keep track of for the report, the number of people you educated, the number of people you surveyed, the per which should be the same, right? Because if you didn't do preliminary survey, educate and follow-up survey, then their da data is thrown out. They have to have all three pieces to be part of your data. So the percentage of survey respondents who are correct when they respond to the first survey question about the source of the tap water 
the percentage who are correct when you when they respond to the follow-up survey question about the source of their tap water, the data related to the behavior that you are targeting. So for example, the percentage of people who left the tap on when brushing their teeth at the preliminary survey versus at the follow-up survey. Take pictures, make a video, you can submit up to 12 photos and one video. Um, submit is really by emailing me the form on the web on the website, can't collect that. So your teacher can email those to me. That is a maximum of five minutes in length. Any questions at this point? So do we have a limit to the number of questions we need to cover or it can be any number? No, it can be any number. Okay, thank you. So you can ask about however many like behaviors you want, if you want to find, you know, the one that you should most target or whatever. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I have a question. Will you be sending us a copy of this of this PowerPoint? I definitely so can, can and I will also be putting the recording, um, maybe this session, maybe another session, depending on which one I find easier to edit or whatever, um, on the internet. So you'll also have access to the recording of the session. Um, I hadn't okay. sent out the slides before, but I can definitely do that. That's easy. Um, so picking a topic. So remember to watch for an email message from us in January or in the case of the Regina School, I guess, in early November. Um, follow the instructions to schedule a time for you and your students. In the case of the school in Regina, um, if your teacher could, yeah, email me and remind me because I might have things scheduled for most of the schools. So once you're done your survey, once you're done serving people, just like shoot me an email and be like, we're done our survey, we're ready for, you know, discussion of, of our target behavior or whatever. Um, Brainstorm with your students to come up with questions to ask us during your online meeting. Um, and your class must meet with us by the end of February. I mean, obviously it's gotta be easier, earlier than that for the Regina group, but that's the deadline in general. Discovering an issue. So look at the results from your preliminary survey. Do people leave the tap on when they brush their teeth? Do people take long showers? What behavior should you target? So some potential attitudes and actions to change. Turning off the tap when you brush your teeth or wash your hands. Reducing time for showers. Not letting the dishwasher or washing machine until it is full. Using the dishwasher instead of hand washing dishes because the dishwasher actually uses less water than hand washing dishes. Um, sink a two liter bottle of water in the toilet tank to flush with less water if your toilet is not a low flow toilet. The um, school that was, the class that was an elementary class that won uh, was in BC and their project was toilet tank bags to reduce the amount of water when people flush. So a previous year they won uh, wildflower school. I don't, I'm drawing a blank of where that exactly is in BC. It might be actually in Langley, I'm not sure. Um, Questions to consider for projects. So local bodies of water and pollution. So what are some causes of water pollution and how can these issues be prevented? So teach them more than just the source of their water, have them care. Like you do not want someone who you educated to be someone who in Saskatoon goes to the beach by the river and then litters in the river. Um, so not just like where the source is, but like how do we protect it? How do we prevent pollution? Where does the water come from before it comes into your home? What needs to happen for the water to be drinkable? So you can teach them about like water treatment. You can teach them about various topics. One of the things that the judges um, will be judging is like whether it was kind of like multifaceted. You taught them different things about water. So questions to consider for projects. So water quality issues in Canada. Are there any communities near you that are under drinking water advisories? That might be something to look up. And if so, you might wanna educate people about that and how long they've been under a drinking water advisory. How is this affecting the lives of the people in those communities? Which First Nations communities are near you and have they had or do they have drinking water quality issues? This is a sign that people in Neshtaga First Nation in Ontario put up. 
they're the ones who are now at, I believe it's 29 and half or 29 three quarter years into a boiled water advisory. That was when they were just over 25 years. Possible research. So it might be useful to include some facts in your presentation or in the materials you use to educate your community to motivate them. So if you tell people, turn the tap off when you brush your teeth, they might be like, okay, stop bossing me around. Like why? So you might want to tell them how many liters of water they'll save by doing that each day or, eight or twice a day. For example, guidelines for Canadian drinking water quality, the number of liters of water used by a typical shower head and by a low flow shower head per minute, how much water is typically wasted when leaving the tap on while brushing your teeth, etc. A small fact or two might help your community to understand the impact that a certain action has on the environment and on water resources. It might also help to make it visual, actually, because I'm thinking about like elementary students in, in a assembly. If you say you'll save 10 liters of water if you turn the tap off when you brush your teeth in the morning and the night, they might not know what 10 liters looks like. So you might want to bring, for example, one of those big like 20 liter jugs and be like, you can save this much water every two days of your life or something like that. So you might want to make it visual how much they're going to save. Um, you can help them to understand how much of an impact they can make in a day, in a week, in a month, in a year. Any questions at this point? No? Okay. Educating our community. This is a picture from school in BC that one, they had these toilet tank bags that they gave out to people who didn't have low flow, um, low flush toilets so that they would uh, use less water with each flush. So after completing your survey, what does your data say? So develop a plan best suited to your baseline data. Like I said, if most people are taking like really long showers or leaving the tap on when they brush their teeth, those are actions that you can target that can make a large change. So if most of your community does not know where the water comes from, you might want to focus on that because that's also part of your project. But if like 80% already know, then maybe it's not as critical as, you know, water conservation. Like if you've got a limited amount of time to talk to them, make sure that you're focusing on the actions and the knowledge that you most need to target. Since you're trying to create a quantifiable positive change, inform your audience about the actions that can create that change. For example, the amount of water that would be saved by limiting use of certain appliances or how much water can be saved by turning the tap off when you brush your teeth or for every minute you cut from your shower time. I mean, this might be a little bit embarrassing for me to admit, but I am the executive director here. I can't tell you how many liters of water my dishwasher uses in the load. So it might be good to look into that. It might depend on the model, et cetera, and tell them, you know, if you like wash a full load in your dishwasher instead of a half load twice, this is how much water you save. So be sure that everyone you educate completes your preliminary survey that will increase your sample size. Establish your baseline data uh, because you obviously need your baseline data before you educate your community. You can't go back and be like, oh, what did you think before I taught you? Keep track of everyone who takes the survey, get names or email addresses so that you can be sure that they will complete your follow-up survey as well because each person in your data needs to have taken the preliminary survey, be educated, and take the follow-up survey. So you got to track these people. Ways to get your message out. Make it fun and informative. So you can have poster sessions, presentations, mail-outs, videos, skits. You can make a website or ask your school or school division if you could add information to your school's website. Understand your audience to come up with a strategy that will be the most interesting to them. Is it mostly students? Is it mostly parents? You might teach them differently depending on who your audience is. How will you be able to get the general community involved? Can you get the general community involved? So ways to get your message out. So formal presentations. So you could have a formal presentation like at a school assembly, or you could even work with like a, a senior living community or something like that and give a presentation. Um, in this case, there's a time commitment and it's, it's a rigid schedule. The presentation starts a certain time and lasts a certain amount of time. And people can ask questions about the presentation or during the presentation, depending on what you allow. 
a poster session could be kind of like a science fair. Um, so you could have different presentations set up or different posters on the wall about different topics related to water. And then it could be a come and go event and people can look at the posters and ask questions. And it's not a big time commitment for your audience because they can come and go as they want and make snacks available to get people to go like coffee, tea, cookies. You can also make an informational video that you could then post on YouTube or any of the other platforms. You could send out um, by Facebook, maybe on your school's Facebook account. Um, you could email to the people who you're educating, et cetera. So you can make an entertaining and educational video to explain your issue. And you can show how actions can be taken to remedy the issue. And it can be shown at an assembly or to family friends or sent out, et cetera. You could also hand out brochures and other informational materials, but if anybody knows about brochures and flyers, you know that often they get tossed. Um, so they could be to take home from school. I know teachers know that often those things end up in the bottom of book bags. So I would encourage something that's more active to educate your community. You can hang posters around the school and the community. That might be a good idea. Like if you're trying to encourage your fellow classmates to take shorter showers, reminders around the school could be helpful. Less time consuming, less organization required, but it's a less direct form of communication. Oh, Regina School has to go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> um, you'll get the you'll be able to see the recording of the end of this, well, or the end of a presentation, um, and you'll have the slides. But I think you kind of know the process now anyway. Um, might be harder for your audience to ask questions and could easily be ignored or people forget they have it or lose it. So the grand prize again is what I had stated earlier. And any questions? Any questions at this point? No, but the bell rang, so I just lost my class. But I, if you have more to talk, I'm still here. I will okay, to, uh, it's almost rest. over. Yeah, it's almost okay. over, so... Yeah, you can okay. stick around and watch the end and let them know, but it's basically over. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so great. acknowledgements. So thank you for joining today and for taking part in the competition to raise awareness about water issues. So thank you to our funders, Weston Family Foundation and RBC for their help. The next step. So you're watching, you're here, so you don't need to worry about emailing me to let me know that you watched the recording. You're here, I'll mark you off as here. Um, brainstorm ideas for the preliminary survey with your students, create the preliminary survey and have your community complete it. So we strongly recommend this for most schools by the end of November, but in the case of the Regina School, probably like mid, well, I guess it is basically mid-October by now already, but in a couple weeks or so. Um, watch for an email message from us in January, or in the case of the Regina School, email me once you've got that survey um, distributed and back, and follow the instructions to schedule a time for you and your students to meet with us to discuss your plan to educate the members of your community. Brainstorm with your students to come up with questions to ask us during our online meeting, and your class might, must meet with us by February 28th at the latest, and on Regina will be a lot earlier than that. So this is my contact information. If you have any questions or need help, or if you'd like to chat about your project at any time, I'm a high school math teacher. So if you want any help with your data analysis, et cetera, let me know. Um, more information is on the web page of our website where your teacher went to register for this competition. And that's it. <laughs>